So if you are subscribed to my channel, you will know that I recently built a home gym. And if you're not subscribed, well, A, what are you being like that for? And B, now you know. Anyway, as a result of having the home gym and also working around a couple of injuries, my training has changed a little since I last made a video like this. So I thought I would just update everyone on my current routine in case you want to copy it, want to copy bits of it, or just find it remotely interesting or helpful in any way whatsoever. Let's do it. So after waking up at 5 a.m., meditating, getting a cold shower and speed reading eight self-help books, I jump on the treadmill. And for anyone who's from the United States of not recognizing blatant sarcasm, none of that was true. I usually get on the treadmill about half eight, nine o'clock in the morning. I don't do cardio every day, but probably four or five times a week. And typically they are the short sessions that I'm about to describe, but I will sometimes do longer sessions if I'm not weight training that day. Anyway, once on the treadmill, I will randomly choose one of the following three workouts. Number one, a steady paced run. It is what it says on the tin, really, just a consistent pace for about 25 minutes. I'm actually dead shit at running, so please don't ask me the pace or anything like that. Number two, incline fast walk. This is basically for when I can't be bothered running, and I know you're not supposed to say that sometimes you can't be bothered doing stuff on YouTube because you should be all motivational and stuff, but the fact is sometimes we can't be bothered running, and yet I still manage to maintain what is, you know, a somewhat acceptable physique, and so I think that actual truth is probably more useful and more motivational than actually trying to be motivational because it means well maybe you can do it too if you're someone who can sometimes not be bothered doing shit number three intervals this is really just some auto regulated intervals flicking between a walk a jog and a fast ish run you can never really flat out sprint on a treadmill like this so it's probably only like 85 percent of my max speed i typically keep the walk and the jog quite consistent in duration but as i go through each cycle i try to increase the time of the sprint again i'll spend about 25 to 30 minutes in total on the treadmill so this is probably a good time for me to mention the sponsors of today's video i'm gonna keep this one pretty short and sweet it is jaybird they make sick headphones or is it maybe it's earphones i'm not sure i probably should have worked that out before i started this but i think i'm gonna roll with the earphones they make sick earphones jbird vista are the ones that i use they're the ones you see me using in this clip and also in like loads of clips on my youtube channel since about april i think it is the noise cancelling is sick they're super comfortable they stay in your ears when you're like doing stuff even running even trying to run fast i never actually run fast but when i try and run fast they do stay in your ears a lot of people ask me that on instagram they're ipx7 water dust and sweat proof i didn't know what that meant either so i googled it it means you're supposed to be able to submerge them up to a meter depth for up to 30 minutes now that's just unnecessary no one's going to do that with headphones but earphones but the long and short of it is it means you can get in the shower with them which is pretty sick i think it's a nice touch in it anyway there's a link in the description you can use code shred 10 it'll get you 10 percent off you get free delivery 14 day money back guarantee and a two-year warranty i think that is all pretty pleasant anyway let's get back to the video <laughs> after that i will do some stretching again this varies in duration depending on what time i got up and how bothered i can be sometimes i feel a bit anxious to get into doing some work if i woke up late but i do try and spend 20 to 30 minutes going through some stretches mainly hamstrings hip flexors and glute stretches because my upper body does seem to be much more flexible and mobile anyway i have done a full video on the routine so i will link that on screen and in the description if you want to check it out and i'll also link another channel that i found pretty useful that's it for morning sessions i do intend on hitting the bag as cardio in the near future but i have a slight shoulder injury at the moment that is preventing me from doing so Between between sessions, I just go about my day, have a couple of meals, do whatever I've got to do, and then I will train again late afternoon, usually about 4.30 or 5 p.m. Weight training. Okay, before we get into this, I just need to give you a bit of context. So I do currently have two minor injuries. My physio tells me it is bicep tendinopathy and a shoulder impingement, which sounds probably worse than it feels to be honest but the long and short of it is i can't do any exercises that involve bicep flexion so no curls and no pull exercises like rows or pull-ups and i also have to go pretty light on my presses because of the shoulder since they are getting better and what i'm able to do is changing week after week it would be pretty pointless for me to follow a set program right now so enough of what i don't do let's go on to what i do do you said do do <laughs> I'm going to mention some exercises specifically and then I'll go into how I put them together. For now, my training is pretty simple. It's based around three main compound lifts, squats, deadlifts and Bulgarian split squats. 
So yes, that is very lower body focused, but I'm fine with it because I'll just get massive legs. And then once my injuries get better and I can train upper body, again, I'll focus more on that and just let my legs atrophy a little bit. So I decided to start squatting and deadlifting again after a very long time, not really doing either. Partly because I can't do much else and partly because I built a deadlift platform. So I feel like it would be kind of wasteful if I didn't actually deadlift. Bulgarian split squats have always been a favorite leg press movement of mine. And I'm involving them just because I'm currently still shit at squatting. And so I wanna be able to do a leg press movement where I can actually shift a decent amount of weight. So every session I'll do at least one of these exercises and sometimes two of the three. So that would be squats and deadlifts or split squats and deadlifts, but never squats and split squats together because it'd just be OTT on the leg press movements. I've never really got very good at squats or deadlifts and I could talk about why, but essentially it boils down to a lack of patience and a lack of perseverance. So this time I'm taking it super slow to begin with. I'm really just trying to relearn the movements properly and dial in my technique before I even begin to care about what weight I'm actually moving. So I'm going high frequency, which means I'm doing them often. Medium volume, which means about 12 to 15 weekly sets for each of those exercises and low intensity, which means I'm keeping to a max RPE of about seven-ish, or in other words, I'm never going near failure and I'm keeping maybe three or four reps in reserve. Now that might sound super easy, but I do think people often misjudge RPE and RIRs because really three reps away from failure is still quite a difficult set if that is true failure. The other main exercises that I'm doing, since bicep flexion with any meaningful weight is off limits right now, I'm having to stick with lat prayer to work on my lats. But as you can see from the demonstration, these do pretty much hit your whole back with the possible exception of upper traps. That brings me on to shrugs. I don't usually do them, but as I can't do any rows, I do want to get some trap work in there. So I'm also including these. The shoulder impingement means that I'm having to keep my overhead presses fairly light, although I am doing some. But the main thing it affects is my chest movements. Bench pressing is out of the question, but I am able to do some flat dumbbell press if I keep a fairly narrow grip. And the weight I can do without discomfort is improving week by week. So I hope to be back at full capacity with those before long. Lateral raises are fine. So I'm doing a lot of those on the cables, which I do prefer to dumbbells just because the resistance is more consistent throughout the rep. And I'm including some front raises as well to try and offset the lack of overhead pressing, at least with any decent weight. The other exercises I'm doing often are tricep isolations, RDLs, ab crunches, and barbell calf raises. So let's move on to the session structure. I'm gonna put five example days together. So I'll start each workout with one of the main three, and sometimes I'll do two of them in the same day. This might seem like overkill, but bear in mind that my intensity for squats and deadlifts is low, and I do have a day off or two each week. I'll do some lap prayer every other session because it's not a particularly taxing exercise, and I do wanna do my best to offset the complete absence of pull-ups and rows. I'll alternate between light overhead pressing and some light flat dumbbell presses. I'll do some weighted ab crunches a couple of times a week, some calf raises a couple of times a week, some shrugs a couple of times a week, and a tricep isolation probably three times a week. I also alternate between lateral raises and cable flies, both pretty light, as well as hitting some RDLs around once a week. So I end up with something that looks like this. You'll notice that I haven't grouped these together in any way, so I'm still using a full body training approach. You can see that where I do a flat press, I do a lateral raise, and where I do an overhead press or a shoulder press, I do a chest fly. As a result of my injuries, this is certainly more limited in exercise variation than my training typically would be. But aside from monotony, there is no real detriment to that. And if you're actually wanting to get better at an exercise, then the best thing to do is that exercise. All right, let's move on to reps and sets. So as a general rule, the best rep range is all of them. And over the course of a program, you should be doing a combination of low, medium, and high reps within that hypertrophy spectrum of, I would say five to 15 reps. The distribution should look kind of like a shallow bell curve with most of your reps being between eight and 12. As I said, I'm not following a program right now, but I will still consciously make sure I'm hitting some different rep ranges just by keeping a mental note of what I did the previous workout. So if I did say sets of 10 for my split squats, one workout, I would then do some lower rep sets of around six the following workout. You don't necessarily have to cover different rep ranges within the same week. You could spend more prolonged periods just training at one rep range before then moving on to another. This is the minimum you should keep in mind if you're not following a program. 
And beyond that, there are some exercises that just suit different rep ranges. Further to that, there are some exercises that just suit different rep ranges. For example, things like the lat prayer or lateral raises sometimes require a bit of focus to get a proper mind-muscle connection and that makes them kind of awkward to go heavy on. Lateral raises are also quite a weak movement in terms of the weight that you can lift. So there's a big difference between stopping three reps from failure with a heavy weight and stopping three reps from failure with light weight. And that is true of all exercises, of course, but it just seems more apparent with exercises where the weight you can shift is already low. So with this in mind, there are some exercises that will remain towards the higher end of the rep range. So with something like lateral raises, the lowest I'll go for reps is probably around eight to 10. And for the highest, I will be hitting that 15. So that's a brief overview of how I'm training these days. And I just wanted to touch on why I'm doing two sessions a day. So the short answer to that is because I can. And the long answer is multifaceted. Firstly, the morning cardio is really just something to get me in the gym and force me into doing my stretches. I'm determined to be consistent with those and jumping on the treadmill first just makes that a lot easier. It's also a much quicker way of getting my TDE up than trying to hit say 10K steps a day, which is always nice, but as it gets colder and darker, I'm probably gonna spend less time walking. So what about lifting twice a day? Would that be advisable? Well, I think there's actually nothing wrong with it, provided you manage your volume. You do need some time to recover between sessions, so I certainly wouldn't recommend trying to squish two training days into one actual day. But if you went the other way and split your one session into two workouts at each end of the day, that certainly would be beneficial. That being said, here comes the advantage of a full body split. Let's say you train push-pull legs, your push workout might be a chest press, a shoulder press, a chest fly, a lateral raise, and a tricep exercise. There is going to be quite a lot of carryover fatigue from one exercise into the next, just because a lot of those exercises overlap with the muscle groups that they use. So in that case, it definitely would be beneficial to split your session up into two. Let's say you had a home gym, you walked in in the morning and you did your chest press and your lateral raises, and then you waited till the evening and you did your overhead press your chest flight and your tricep exercise, you would perform better in those exercises for having that big break in between, right? It makes sense. Now, I'm not saying everyone should do this, by the way, obviously it's just hypothetical. I know that it's like wildly impractical for most people to actually do two sessions a day. I'm just talking theoretically, right? Anyway, if you were training full body, you tend to go from one exercise to another one that uses completely different muscle groups. So there's very little fatigue that you carry over from say squats, into flat dumbbell press. And so I don't think you would get the same benefit from splitting a full body session into two workouts over the course of a day as you would with like a bodybuilding split or a push-pull leg split because you're already addressing or trying to address that fatigue issue with your exercise selection for each workout. And therefore, since I do train full body, I don't really see the advantage in me personally doing two lifting sessions per day. You gotta be mad anyway to do it really on you, like on a consistent basis. Like It's a lot, man, unless you're a proper bodybuilder. Like, What about 1.5 sessions a day? Now, hear me out, that sounds weird, right? But another way this could be useful is if you want to improve on a particular exercise, right? As I said before, the best way to get better at an exercise is to do more of it. So let's say I wanted to improve my pull-ups. I might follow a typical normal training split or program and have my sessions every evening, yeah. But every morning I might still go in and do like three or four sets of pull-ups regardless of what I'm training that night, right? And is that training twice a day? I don't know if it counts. It's not two sessions, it might be one and a half, but that would certainly help you get better at that exercise and that's true of any exercise, right? It doesn't have to be attached onto your training session. Anyway, that's how I'm currently training right now. I hope you find it useful if you have injuries yourself. Hang in there, we're gonna get through this, we're gonna get big again one day. Focus on what you can focus on, right? It's fine. Just be good at something else for a while, you know? See you later, like my shit. Subscribe to my video if you haven't already. Fucking smash that like button, mate. Comment something nice. Say Joe, that was a sick video. Okay, see you later, well, I'm dizzy, man. Joe Delaney is my hero!